This program contains some graphic scenes. Viewer discretion advised. Tonight, on the world's most amazing videos, there's terror in the sky when two fighter jets collide in midair. Plus, a firebomb turns a human target into a human torch. And correctional officers fight for their lives in the worst prison riot ever caught on tape. Then, a race car skids out of control, hurling an innocent bystander 25 feet into the air. And a Navy crewman gets too close to a jet engine and is sucked inside. These are the incredible true life stories of people who face their most desperate hour and live to tell about it. Everything you are about to see is real. Real people. Real danger. Real excitement. Get ready to experience the thrill of a lifetime. You are about to witness the world's most amazing videos. Daytona Beach, Florida. At the world-famous Daytona Speedway, these high-octane race cars are burning up the track. As they approach the turn known as Calamity Corner, this driver spins out of control and heads directly for paramedic Mike Staley, who is standing in the infield. Cameraman Buddy Pittman is shocked by what he sees. It's one of the most sickening feelings you can imagine. There was nothing around Mike to protect him. And just imagine what that person is going through at that time. It really was like someone just punched you in the stomach. The race car smashes into Mike and tosses him 25 feet through the air. Then the vehicle rolls on top of him pinning him to the ground. You're just sitting there hoping and praying that this guy is okay and in the back of your mind feeling that there's really no way you think this guy can survive this. Mike's fellow paramedics work furiously to pull their friend from the wreckage. With his vital signs weak, they rush him into a waiting helicopter. Incredibly, Mike lives to tell about his terrifying ordeal. When I saw something gray and black coming out of the corner of my eye, from that point, I don't remember flipping through the air. Uh, the next thing I know is I'm underneath something that is roaring, and I feel like I'm on fire. At that moment, um, I was a little afraid. Uh, in fact, I was scared. Today, Mike leads a new life as a motivational speaker. He credits the quick-thinking paramedics of the Daytona Speedway with saving his life. If that accident would have happened in any intersection in America today, I would have died. Because of where it was, I'm alive. A group of angry tenants have been legally evicted from this property to make way for the construction of a new building. But they're not going quietly. Busan, Korea. A tense standoff between the construction workers and tenants escalates into an all-out riot. The tenants are holed up on a construction tower and have vowed to fight to the finish. Using rocks and homemade fire bombs, they attack the workers. They even use makeshift flamethrowers to keep them at bay. Each time the workmen try to remove the tenants from the tower, they are assaulted by bottles of flaming gasoline. The foreman, the only man not wearing a hard hat, gathers his men and uses a wooden platform as a shield. They move toward the tower under a heavy barrage of bricks and firebombs. Suddenly, a Molotov cocktail shatters on the shield exploding into a deadly fireball. The foreman is set ablaze. Moments later, another bomb is hurled from the tower onto his head. 
He stumbles back to his men who fight to extinguish the flames. Amazingly, this human torch manages to escape with only minor injuries. Moments later, the riot police move in and take control. The protesters are arrested, and the insurrection is finally over. Gloucestershire, England. A quarter of a million spectators thrill to a high-speed exhibition of the world's fiercest fighter jet. But when one pilot gets his signals crossed, the air show becomes a collision course for disaster. Two Russian pilots, Sergei Trezviatsky and Alexander Byeshnov, have come here to perform a dangerous synchronized flying maneuver in their MiG-29 jets. These two close friends have trained for this day for more than a year. When they take off, they have no way of knowing the terror that lies ahead. The veteran pilots start the routine with a daring high-speed pass. Alexander prepares for their next stunt by flying his plane into a reverse loop. Then he disappears into the clouds. Sergei loses sight of his comrade and makes a split-second decision to abort the routine. But suddenly, Alexander roars out of the cloud and smashes into Sergei's plane. The crowd watches in stunned disbelief. Absolute shock and horror. Um, I've never witnessed anything like that. Watch again. The impact is devastating. Sergei's wing slams into his friend's aircraft breaking it in two. Alexander's jet is now a giant fireball rocketing to the ground. Seconds after the collision, Sergei ejects. He cannot find Alexander. All he sees is a raging inferno at the end of the runway. Sergei's abandoned fighter jet crashes into a nearby field. As he floats to Earth, he finally spots Alexander shoot. As we watch again, we can see that Alexander is able to eject from the fiery fuselage just in time. Incredibly, both pilots are able to walk away from the horrific crash. It's a miracle that they made it out alive. Coming up, a brave fireman rescues a frightened man from a burning building. Now both their lives hang in the balance. Plus, it's a terrifying day at the zoo when a kangaroo launches a surprise attack. Then, a fuel tanker explodes into a massive fireball, wiping out an entire city block. And a panic racer is trapped in the raging rapids and hope is fading fast. How will he survive? Find out when the world's most amazing videos continues. Perth, Australia. The Avon River is home to one of the most treacherous canoe races in the world. It's fast, furious, and unforgiving. These turbulent rapids are a swirling death trap so dangerous that they claimed the life of one young competitor earlier in the day. Most racers are so fearful of this hazardous stretch of water that they incur extra time by getting out and carrying their canoes to avoid the danger. But 23-year-old Lachlan Mills tries to save a couple of minutes by barreling through the rough rapids. There he is wearing the helmet. Suddenly, his fight for first place becomes a fight for his life. The 
force of the current flips Lachlan and wedges him between two jagged rocks. Spectators along the shore watch in horror as Lachlan is dragged beneath the surface. Rescue diver Tim Moore knows he has to act fast. The only chance he's got of getting out was me, because there was nothing else going to get him out. Tim jumps in, but he can't move. The powerful rapids are holding him back. It's so unbelievable. Uh, there was nothing we could do. Lachlan's life is slipping away. Tim summons the strength to battle the brutal current, finally reaching the canoe. Uh, I get to the bow and I start to lift, and, and I didn't budge. just didn't budge at all. Lachlan has now been underwater for more than a minute and a half. Tim has no idea whether he's alive or dead, but he's not about to give up. There'd been a clock ticking in the back of my mind. I knew that uh, it was all a matter of timing. If something didn't get done very soon, he'd be pulling out a body. Just when all hope seems lost, Lachlan gets a lucky break. An out-of-control racer bumps into his canoe, freeing it from the rocks. Tim pulls Lachlan's head above the water, but he's not breathing. Quickly, Tim and his fellow rescuers begin mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. They pull Lachlan to safety, praying that it's not too late. Call it fate or whatever, but I just don't think uh, Lachlan's time was up. After what seems like an eternity, Lachlan regains consciousness. He recalls what went wrong. Shortly after I went over the edge, that's when I started to lose control over the boat. That was when my heart was in my mouth, because that was the point of no return. White words everywhere. The realization was coming to me that, yeah, I could quite easily die. I could quite easily drown here at age 23. Thanks to the courage of rescue diver Tim Moore, Lachlan survives. But he will never again underestimate this river's awesome power. New York City. Fire consumes an office building, trapping Jose Gallegos on a narrow window ledge, 13 stories above Times Square. As the blazing inferno threatens to end Jose's life, firefighter Patrick Barr knows time is of the essence. I wanted to make sure that uh, we got to Jose before he either fell or jumped. Gasping for breath, Jose begins to panic. The firefighters plead with him not to move. When I couldn't see and I couldn't hear and I couldn't breathe, I pretty much knew that I was dying. Firefighters race to the scene from all over the city. Jose hangs on, thinking that he's about to be rescued. But when he realizes that the ladders can't reach him, he loses hope. I was pretty scared and I had a lot of fear because I knew that if I go back in, I will burn. And if I move, I'll go down. Patrick knows there's just one way left to save Jose's life. It's a dangerous operation, and uh, we felt that was our uh, only option at that time. Firefighters lower Patrick down to the stranded man. He has only seconds to reach him. Jose is about to pass out from inhaling the thick smoke. Jose was in uh, bad shape. His face was uh, black uh, with, with smoke and soot and he was uh, not that strong, he was very weak at that point. The moment he sees Patrick, Jose collapses into his arms. When I saw the firefighter coming down, life came back to me and I felt something very, very strong, and I was able to breathe again, and after that I lost it, I passed out. Patrick uses his legs to keep the unconscious man from falling, but their situation is desperate. The men are too heavy to be pulled back up, and the rope is too short to lower them to the ground. Now they are dangling helplessly high above the city. The other firefighters will have to act fast to save the two men. Meanwhile, the only thing that Patrick can do is hold on and wait. If something went wrong, there would probably be a zero chance of uh, survival. It was just too great a uh, distance. 
Using every last ounce of strength he's got, Patrick holds on to Jose's lifeless body. Then, he decides to take action. While maintaining his grip on Jose, he frees up one arm to smash in a window. His fellow firefighters show up just in time to help. I stepped up to the ledge and I uh, turned around and the people on the street of Manhattan uh, were reporting. So I just gave him a wave of acknowledgement. That, that I was very relieved that it was over. But no one is more relieved than Jose Gallegos. He's grateful to Patrick and the other firefighters for saving his life. Now, I do appreciate very much what I have. And uh, I believe that New York City Fire Department is the best, the very best. Grampians National Park, Australia. Despite clearly posted warnings not to feed the animals, visitors to this wildlife preserve offer pieces of bread to these playful kangaroos. Sean Fitzpatrick and his seven-year-old son, Bo, have been coming here for years without incident. Until today. Without warning, a 200-pound kangaroo lunges at Sean, savagely gouging his face and legs with its jagged claws. Don't to feed the animals to me meant that they may get the wrong food. It doesn't mean that, um, that you may aggravate the animal enough for him to do you serious damage. The vicious attack is over in seconds, but the results are devastating. This violent slash is so severe, Sean requires 30 stitches. Look again. Sean doesn't see the powerful animal crouching, ready to attack. He grabbed hold of me with his uh, two front paws. The rest of his body came up onto my lap and his, and his hind legs were, were kicking away, trying to, I presume, damage me. It's a day that little Bo won't soon forget. That's a horrible thing that's ever happened to my dad. Oh, get stiff. Ooh. Mushan, South Korea. A gas leak at a propane storage facility has erupted into a raging inferno. Firefighters scramble to contain the blaze before it spreads to these gas trucks. If one of these trucks explodes, it will ignite the seven tons of liquid propane that are already boiling in these high-pressure tanks. Police and rescue workers quickly evacuate the area as helicopters and fire crews douse the trucks with foam and water. But the flames are too intense, and the gas in this tank truck is simply too hot. Then, disaster strikes. The tanker explodes, setting off a fiery chain reaction that consumes an entire city block. Despite evacuation efforts, thousands of innocent people in nearby buildings are placed in jeopardy. The explosion blew flames up to 400 feet high. I thought the entire building was going to collapse down on top of us. But the danger is far from over. The blast has ripped an enormous hole in the pavement, exposing huge underground storage tanks of liquid propane. Above ground, Canisters of fuel continue to burst as firemen risk their lives in a desperate effort to control the volatile situation. Suddenly, the flames reach the underground tanks. Another devastating explosion rocks the city, sending a gigantic fireball into the sky. The blast scorches everything in its path. More than 60 people are injured, including four firefighters. Two days later, the remaining tanks finally burn out. But this horrifying image will forever haunt the terrified people who live through this fiery nightmare. Up next, a brutal wave sweeps a group of terrified villagers out to sea. A dangerous high-speed chase ends with an explosive finish. Then later, 
a Navy crewman is sucked into a jet engine. How could he possibly survive? Find out when the world's most amazing videos returns. One fifty-six, Beaumont. I got one running. Beaumont, Texas. Deputy Greg Fountain is in hot pursuit of two suspected drug dealers. Traveling at a rate of speed about ninety miles an hour at this time. It wasn't just somebody not wanting a traffic ticket. They had a reason uh, to try to flee us. When the suspects can't shake the cops, they start tossing their drugs out of their speeding car. They're throwing the dope out the window. I could actually see items coming out the windows, small white objects that appeared to be rocks of crack cocaine. The desperate suspects increased their speed. The Traveling rate speed is 110 miles an hour. Okay, we're putting out spikes at 124 and the bell road. The driver blows a tire on a spike strip and swerves out of control. He slams into an oncoming patrol car, but somehow manages to keep going. All right, he hit 101. His tires are going flat. He just lost the front left tire. He's going to cut you off. Unable to outrun the cops, the suspect goes on the attack. They try to ram blue cars. Go ahead and do what you need to take them out. The man is now driving on his rims causing sparks to shoot down the road. At that point, uh, we knew we had some guys that we needed to catch and get off the highway. The cops close in, but suddenly a spark sets the suspect's car on fire. He's on fire, he's on fire, back off. He's on fire. It's something like I've never seen before. Even with the, the fire roaring underneath the vehicle, these guys just kept going. The car goes into a spin. Explosion after explosion rocks the vehicle until it finally skids into a ditch. Deputy Fountain and his fellow officers rush to apprehend the fugitives, but they're stunned by what happens next. As I'm running up to the vehicle, I, I'm not believing my eyes that these guys are not coming out of this burning car. Get out, get out, get out, get out. The suspects refuse to get out of their car. Deputies manage to wrestle one man free, but the other won't budge. Because I can tell you, if I was in a burning car, uh, you wouldn't have to tell me twice to come out of it. Deputy Fountain is determined to save the man's life. But then, the situation takes another terrifying turn. Get away from it! Get away from it! Flames and smoke shoot skyward. Incredibly, the officer manages to pull the suspect away from the exploding vehicle. For these brave cops, a job well done means everyone gets out alive. We have to do it the best we can and still be able to make it home at night to our families. Zhaoshan, China. The people of this quiet seaside village have come to witness a rare natural phenomenon known as a tidal bore. This awesome display of pounding waves and churning water is caused when the moon exerts an intense gravitational pull on the earth. The villagers are captivated by the amazing sight. They don't realize that just offshore an ominous wave is forming. More and more people crowd the coast, still unaware that the swell is gaining strength and heading straight toward them with the power of a runaway freight train. Along the seawall, the water begins to swirl. The enormous tide moves closer, gaining in speed. Suddenly, the wave pounds the shore with brutal force, causing these terrified villagers to run for their lives. The violent surge barrels down the coastline. swell slammed into these villagers so quickly they have no chance to escape. The savage riptide knocks them off their feet and drags them into the pounding sea. Two 
men fight for their lives. Watch again. Instead of remaining at a safe distance, these spectators dare to get a closer look and pay the price. Now the villagers must become rescuers. One man is quickly pulled to safety, but another is overwhelmed by the deadly undertow. Panicked onlookers try to reach the desperate man with bamboo branches, but he can't hold on. The struggling man is losing strength, and the powerful current is dragging him farther and farther away from the shore. Then, at the last possible second, he manages to get a firm grip on one of the branches. The rescuers form a human lifeline, knowing that at any moment another giant swell could sweep them all away. Using all their strength, they lift the man to shore. These brave villagers have battled one of nature's deadliest foes and won. Mount Gambia, Australia. Hot rodders speed around the track during the final qualifying leg of the Blue Light Classic. But just out of the second turn, there's big trouble. Crash has left one of the cars stalled in a pool of burning gasoline. Driver Linton Connor is trapped in the fiery inferno, desperately struggling to free himself from his seatbelt. But it's jammed. 20 seconds pass. Frantic rescue workers fight to extinguish the flames. The severed gas line continues to fuel the raging fire. Linton is gasping for breath, pleading for help. I could see Linton moving and actually saying, get me out. Thoughts flashed through my mind that uh, we may not get him out. Linton's girlfriend, Sandra Olsen, runs to him, fearing the worst. I thought that Linton had died when this other crew member turned me away so that I couldn't look at it. Linton has been stuck in the burning car for 40 agonizing seconds. Rescuers use an emergency vehicle to ram his car away from the pool of gasoline. But the dangerous move pushes the car over the rescuer in the orange suit. Luckily, he survives uninjured. A minute has now passed and the fire is still out of control. With no other choice, Linton's friends brave the flames, hoping to get close enough to pull him to safety. But the fire is too intense. A minute and 20 seconds have gone by. It's now or never. One of the men risks his life by climbing onto the blazing car. Reaching inside, he rips apart the seat belt and pulls Linton out of the burning wreckage. The injured driver collapses onto the track. Linton has escaped his fiery death trap, but is he alive? I didn't expect to see him in one piece. All I could see at that stage was that his hands were white, like white rubber gloves. Linton suffers critical burns to his hands, but amazingly, he survives. Well, this is it. This is the end of the line, you know. And I folded my arms and put my head down. Then I realized he just can't give up that easy. Linton stared death in the face, but mustered the courage to fight back. He was rewarded with his life. I feel extremely lucky to be alive. Coming up, correctional officers fear for their lives when a gang war breaks out behind prison walls. Then, it's a skydiver's worst nightmare when he can't find his ripcord. Then later, an angry wrestler attacks the ref, sending him down for the count when the world's most amazing videos continues cheshire correctional institution connecticut it's sunday morning and everything seems calm then all hell breaks loose 
fight between two rival gang members erupts into a full-scale riot in the prison auditorium. Thirteen correctional officers are trapped in the melee, hopelessly outnumbered by more than 300 violent inmates. Broken pieces of a staircase railing are turned into weapons. Punches fly and chairs are thrown as these hardened criminals beat each other mercilessly. The vicious inmates leap over the auditorium benches to get at each other. The officers' worst fears are realized as they become human targets for the prisoners' rage. They are now trapped in a desperate situation. One officer falls and is kicked repeatedly. Another takes a brutal blow to the head. Backup finally arrives. And prison officials bring the situation under control. The gang war leaves nine officers injured, one seriously. It could have been worse, if not for the courageous officers who stood their ground. Taft, California. This first-time skydiver is about to take the plunge from 11,000 feet. You ready to do this? Yeah. He's confident that nothing will go wrong. But cameraman David Crouch, who's along to videotape the jump, quickly finds himself witnessing a life and death struggle. Seconds after leaping from the plane, the rookie skydiver is in trouble. He's flipped upside down and spinning wildly out of control. I knew something was going to go wrong at that point. Pulling the ripcord now will only entangle him in the parachute and send him plummeting to the ground below. One of his instructors tries to turn him over. But the man is spinning too fast. I knew that a fall from this altitude, whether or not a fully deployed parachute, would have been more than likely certain death. As he shoots this video, David becomes determined not to let the student die. I decided at this point I needed to dock on him and take control of the situation. David manages to flip the terrified skydiver over, but the man is still confused and disoriented. He's falling at 200 feet a second and can't find his ripcord. Sometimes in free fall you just forget everything we've taught you and everything just goes. Watch his hands. The young man panics as he frantically grabs at his chest, trying to find his ripcord. With only seconds to spare, David swoops in. He lunges for the ripcord. Finally, the chute opens. Thanks to David's quick action, the student makes a safe and uneventful landing. Drugs, gangs, and money, a deadly combination. Altus, Oklahoma. The local police department is trying to shut down a thriving drug ring. Chief Mike Patterson decides to send two undercover informants to the 400 block of Hudson Street to make a buy. That would probably be, I'd say, the most dangerous block in our city. I remember many, many fights, shootings, stabbings, assaults in that one block area. The police have concealed a video camera in the dashboard of this truck in hopes it will record the evidence needed to send the drug dealers to jail. Police officers in unmarked cars are waiting nearby in case the informants get into trouble. It's like a war zone in those areas. They carry guns and knives and anything you can think of, they carry it. The informants know the unspoken language of the drug dealers. You stick two fingers up means a $20 rock, and they'll run over and sell it, you know. A bunch of them will come over and try and sell you a $20 rock. Usually they fight to sell you a rock. But not this time. 
The drug dealers suspect that the men in the truck are working for the cops. They send over a woman to deliver a message. Well, come back over here for these kids. We weren't really real worried about it at that point. Now here comes six of them again. And then a whole group of people started walking towards the pickup, the ones that we had been making our buys from, and they were coming back over to sell to us. Here's the one red bandana. What's up? Got a 2-0. I can't give him no money. I got when one of the men strikes the informant, he tries to escape. The drug dealers open fire with a barrage of bullets. The truck flips over. Come on, we rolled the truck. We rolled the truck. Get out. We rolled the truck. The camera is knocked out as the vehicle rolls onto its side, riddled with bullets. The two informants are trapped inside. We couldn't get out without getting hit by bullets. They were still firing as they were running towards us. The police officers rush in and save them. It was only later when they watched the videotape that the informants realized just how close they came to death. All at once the buy went bad and, uh, you know, your heart starts beating faster and you don't know what's going to happen next. If you look carefully into his hand, you can see a pistol. And he takes the pistol and raises it up and points it into the cab area of the vehicle. We were both pretty shocked because we never even saw the gun come through the window. So at that point, we both realized we could have been killed. Despite the danger, these brave men on the front line of the drug war vow to fight on. As long as these individuals are selling their junk on the streets, we're going to be there. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow when we catch you, but you'll eventually get caught. Thanks to this video, these violent drug dealers were put behind bars. Coming up, a pickup truck is used as a battering ram in a daring department store robbery. And when a Navy crewman gets too close to a jet engine, it's the most shocking aircraft accident ever caught on tape. When the world's most amazing videos returns. There's trouble in the ring in a high school wrestling match. And when an unsuspecting referee gets caught in the middle, the cry, kill the ref, becomes all too real. Colville, Washington. High school wrestler Josh Kelk in black faces off against Chad Hildebrandt. Josh has been dreading this match because Hildebrandt is a bully known for his dirty tactics. When Josh gets the upper hand in the match, Hildebrand resorts to a cheap shot. He jams his fingers into Josh's face, trying to gouge his eyes. He reached up and stuck his thumb in my eye and flipped me over. Josh doesn't get mad, he gets even. He pins his opponent to the mat and wins the match. But this confrontation is far from over. Hildebrand springs up from the floor and gives Josh a shove. When he came at me, I was just shocked. I didn't think he was taking it that far. Veteran official Bob West moves in. And then... Hildebrand headbutts the ref, smashing him in the temple and knocking him out cold. The force of the blow is so severe that Bob stops breathing for 10 seconds before he comes to. I fell back, my eyes had rolled back in my head, and I remember being very fuzzy, a lot of people milling around, and then I realized that I'd been headbutted. Hildebrand is charged with assault and sentenced to 30 days in jail, but Bob never fully recovers. Severe headaches plague him every day of his life. He now has a message for those who don't play fair. We want you to compete, but if you cross that line, and you assault a sports official, that there are consequences for your actions, and those actions will be dealt with severely. Morrow, Georgia. This sleepy Atlanta suburb gets a nasty wake-up call. Burglars in a speeding pickup truck crash their way into a department store. Their goal? To make off with as many expensive items as possible. After the driver smashes through the glass doors, his backup team storms in to grab the merchandise. The security lights come on and the alarm sounds. 
On the tape, we can see the driver shouting orders to his crew. They've only got seconds until police arrive. He gets out of the truck. It shows the three other guys running into the store following the truck, and then it shows also in the mirror where he's directing them, telling them what stuff that he wants them to get. Loaded down with merchandise, the crooks quickly flee the crime scene. But the driver's exit is about as smooth as his entry. His truck causes even more damage as he crashes through the doors one more time. It's been a quick but lucrative hit. They were in the store less than one minute. They got away with a little over $12,500 worth of uh, designer clothes. According to police, the plan worked because it was so simple. You see the glass? It's large enough to get a vehicle in. You, you, you hit the gas pedal and you go in, load up, and back out. And uh, if you can do that within a, a couple of minutes, you know, your odds of getting caught at that are pretty slim. These brazen crooks think they've pulled off the perfect crime. They've managed to get in and out of the store without leaving police a single shred of physical evidence. But when this videotape is shown on the local news, the police receive dozens of tips, and the thieves are eventually apprehended. They weren't quite as smart as they thought they were this time. The Persian Gulf, February 1991. On the flight deck of the USS Theodore Roosevelt, a Navy crewman is working close to an A-6 intruder fighter jet. Too close. When the pilot throttles up the powerful plane, the crewman is suddenly sucked into one of its jet engines. Take another look at this amazing video. One minute the crewman is working next to the plane, the next he disappears right into the engine. Incredibly, the man actually lives through this frightening ordeal. He's seen here a few hours later. Despite an extensive investigation for several months, we have been unable to locate this Navy crewman. If you know this man, or if you have any other amazing videos, then we have a cash reward waiting for you. Just write us at World's Most Amazing Videos, Post Office Box 933026, Los Angeles, California, 90093. The world's most amazing videos will return in a moment. Next on the world's most amazing videos. A stealth bomber falls out of the sky and crashes into a backyard picnic. It's high drama when a hot air balloon collides with a high tension power line. Oh. A massive glacier crashes into the sea sending terrified tourists running for their lives. This javelin thrower means business, and the official gets the point. Next time on the world's most amazing videos. There's a brand new family comedy coming to NBC Tuesday night. A woman trying on clothes stuck her whole rear end through one of those curtains at me. It's called Everything's Relative. She was flirting. Imagine having a dad who flirts with everyone you meet. Sales girl is obviously flirting. And even though they're divorced, he still flirts with your mom. How can I ever get married after you? Oh. Hey, there's my girl. It's the show about relatives. Everything's relative. Tuesday after Just Shoot Me.